Hello everyone. I'm excited about this video because in this video you will learn how to create a really cool chart that appeared in the Economist magazine. This chart looks like a map but instead of your typical filled in maps aka choroplets you will see an area plot where a state should be. As you can see this chart gives you a lot of information in a small space. For example, you can see the changes in the number of cases over time. You can also see the result of the 2016 presidential election. And you also see a legend right below the chart to see the dates when key decisions were made. I wanted to see whether I could recreate this chart in R. In this video, you will learn about those steps. And the great thing about this script is that you can modify it to create any map type. I'm sure you will agree we could certainly use fewer choroplets, fewer filled maps. So let's get started and take a look at the script. The first step will do is we will load all of our favorite libraries. I created an Excel file with the location of each of the states and in an 8 by 11 grid. So we will load that Excel file with the location of each of the states with one square per state. And that's how this data frame looks like with the location information. Next, I generated some fake data for each of the states. And this data frame contains a metric for each state for months from February to June. One metric per month per state. And this is how that data frame looks like. One feature of this chart is the legend below the chart that shows the changes in the metric with some key dates. Therefore, I generate a data frame with start dates, end dates, and a key decision date. Once the start date for each of the state is generated, I add some random days to get an end date as well as a key decision date. That data frame looks like this. Then I create a table to randomly assign the highlight colors for each of the states. I join this table with the state locations we imported in the beginning. Now let's create a function to create the bar, the legend bar, based on these dates. This chart is a dot plot or a point to show the easing date and a segment date, a segment plot to create a line between start date and end date. Then I plot two vertical lines at the end using the annotation type of segment. Let's see how this plot looks like when we run this function. Next, I create a function to create an area graph which will also show the state name and line with the highlight colors of our choosing as seen in the Economist article in which they use the, the party that voted in that state for the presidential election. That plot looks like this. Next, rather than plotting everything, we actually store the plots in the table we created earlier. This way we still retain each state its location in the grid and the associated plot in a table that we can is easily manipulate. We use the map function to iterate over the state and the highlight color to create the area plot, the error bar plot, and put them, combine them in a single plot using the plot grids function from the cow plot package. Now we could have used a loop here, but using the mutate function from dplyr and map2, let us create a variable to store the ggplot object. This is how that table looks like. 
Now notice the last column called plots. It's a GG plot object. Next, let's create the legend plot that explains the area plot. Since there's so much information, a legend helps explain that area plot. And since, since it has some additional information, we can't use the previous function and we will have to create a separate plot. Using that function, that legend plot looks like this. Now let's create the legend plot for the highlight color. It's just a highlight line. In this case, we are creating a legend plot for, and I'm just making something up for pizza preference. And that plot will look like this. We need to create another legend for the error bar type of a plot, which I call it an error bar type of a or range bar type of a plot, which shows the start, end, and the easing date. And when you run this function, that plot will look like this. Now we are getting close, uh, closer to the final finishing touches. Let's create an empty vector for that 8 by 11 grid for the final plot. And in this vector, let's store the plots in their respective locations, which we had loaded right in the beginning through that Excel file. Now we will place the legend of the area plot in the first box. Then we'll put the preference legends in the third and fourth box and we are going in the first row. Now as the final step, we will place all of these subplots in a grid, again using that plot grid function from cowplot. And when you run this function, this plot will look something like this. pretty close to that economist chart, but we need to add some title, subtitle, and captions. When we add all of those, it's still a ggplot object, and we can save it using the ggsave function. And it's done. Now let's open up the image file and see what the plot looks like. Pretty neat. Let's compare it with the original plot. It's very close. And I'm happy, I'm happy with these results because now this script can be used for other data sets and additional graphic design, uh, manual graphic design would be minimal. There you have it. A map-like plot with an individual area plot for each state along with some additional details for each of the plots, legends, and other keys. I know I skipped over some of the tiny, small, but important steps. And if I were to cover those, this video would have been at least an hour long. You can find the code in the link given in the description. If anything is unclear, please let me know here in this video or on the blog post. I hope you like this video. Thank you.